Success Insight shares the stories of the people with passion and drive who make things happen in the world. Here's your host, Howard Fox. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Success Insight Podcast. Our guest today is David and Reese from Windchime Storytime, storytelling podcasts for children. And Windchime Storytime was created to bring the magic of reading and stories to a new generation. Reese and David are creative and an adventurous duo, bringing stories alive with sounds and voices. Using the podcast medium, that goal is to transport your family to the childhood worlds you remember and brings everyone together around loving stories. David and Reese, welcome to the Success Insight Podcast. Thanks for having us. Thanks. So my first question, David and Reese or Reese and David, and I'll flip those. It's kind of like going to Starbucks and asking for an iced grande Americano. <laughs> and they say, yeah, sure, we'll give you a grande iced Americano. So I may <laughs> flip the names, but it's all done with much gratefulness of you two joining us today. And we met via another Facebook group illustrators and children's book authors. And, you know, this idea that I was seeing of storytelling using the podcast medium. And I thought that was really interesting. So I would love if you would share with our listeners a little bit about your background and how you got into this world of podcasting and specifically around using the medium for storytelling for children. So who would like to start? I'll start. David and I are very imaginative and creative people, and we love to be silly, and we love to start new creative projects. So we have always loved storytelling, and David in particular is skilled with the funny voices. So we just hatched the idea to read stories we knew, along with meeting new authors and that's where the podcast came from. Fantastic. Now, is this podcast, Windchime Storytime, is this a full-time creative endeavor? Is this something you have enjoyed doing and looked, looking for an outlet for your creativity? How did this begin? This is definitely a side project that came hatched from our being at home and just wanting more things to do, especially with quarantine happening. And that's where the idea came from. Very good. So, David, I, I'm sure you have a voice in here as well. So you're the creative voice side of the house. Where did that talent come from, using your voice and being creative with it? Probably from my older brother. Me and him, just as children and even to today, like to impersonate our parents or grandparents and aunts and uncles and things like that. Okay. It's just always been doing things like that. Fantastic. Now, you guys are in California, and I think you mentioned the Santa Rosa area. So that's definitely wine country. So I think, you know, drinking a bottle of wine and reading some stories, that could help with loosening you guys up and, and having some cool times. But I digress there. In addition to the work that you're doing with the podcast, what are, and you kind of alluded, this is kind of a side hustle. You two would have been great guests for our new uh, podcast series, Side Hustle Saturday. But in terms of the podcast, what are your day jobs? What are, what are you doing? So I work in the pharmaceutical industry. I help develop new drugs. Okay. And then I am an IT tech for one of the local school districts. Fantastic. How did the idea of the podcast then, I mean, in quarantining, and I totally get that, but how did the idea of the podcast and the using the children's books, where did that idea get the spark for you guys? Risa, while she works, has always enjoyed to listen to audiobooks, and that kind of enabled the genesis. Yeah, we started listening to audiobooks and even going back into our childhood and thinking about old stories we loved. And we both also love other types of podcasts. So we thought we could do our own podcast and bring some of those old stories we love back into the new world in a new way. Okay, what are kind of some of the stories that you're bringing back into this medium and how are you kind of making it to your own? So the biggest rewind story we've done is the Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy series. 
those were ones that I loved as a kid. And I know that even people beyond loved the Raggedy Ann series. So we're really enjoying bringing new voices to those stories and having them come alive in a new way. They're older stories, but when you read them, it's just like today. We really enjoy those. Very cool. And when you kind of sit down and start to plan out what you want to do, how did you pick the particular books like the Raggedy Ann series? And and all of a sudden, this vision came back in my head of Raggedy Ann. I don't think I've heard that name in a long time. So actually, maybe even while we're having this podcast, one of you is leaning over to get one of the books and you can kind of maybe share a little bit with us. So not to put you guys on the spot. But how did the particular book and how do you then plan out what you're going to do during this podcast time? We start picking out the stories and we kind of just begin with the stories we enjoy. And we also take submissions as well. But with the older stories, we kind of look at it. I usually do the narration side. And then when we come upon a new character in the story, We just pick who might like to take it on, and then we workshop it for a couple minutes. Okay, are they going to sound gruff? Are they going to sound excited? You know, you think about the the character's personality and kind of marry the voice with the character. Very cool. And what has been the reaction from your community of friends and family and new friends that you're making in the children's book space or on in the podcast landscape? But what's been the reaction so far? Friends and family have been supportive. It's always nice to see Maurice's grandmother is one of the first listeners. It's always great to have people say, oh my gosh, Raggedy Ann, just like you just did, like, you just took me on a journey into my memory and they get to remember all those fun times and then, you know, hopefully share them again with their kids. So that's so cool. And then connecting with new authors and creators and they get to hear their story brought to life in a different way. And they just are always so grateful and happy. And it's just amazing to hear that feedback and be able to work with artists who themselves are so creative and bring our creativity to their own projects. Very cool. And when you bring another children's book author and their book onto your podcast, how are you working with them in planning what you're going to do? Is it like they submit the book or do they have to enroll with you and you get a feel like it's just going to be a match for for both parties? How does that work? So yeah, we ask them to submit their book, usually just an e-copy, which is totally great for us. And we just read up the book. We give it a look, consider if it's right for our podcast. You know, we consider the length, and, you know, what voices we can use, but we just kind of evaluate it like that. And most of the time we can find a way to incorporate our style into the submissions that we receive. So from there, we just contact the author and if they're still interested, then we begin production and we just take the reins from there. We take the words and bring everything to life ourselves. Okay. And how long is a typical podcast? I mean, the reason I ask this is, you know, some children's books, I don't know, they're 40 to 50 pages-ish. Some are chapter-based, so they go a little longer. But how long is a, a typical reading for you? And in fact, are you reading the whole book or are you just doing portions of the book? So we do both styles. We do serials and we also do just standalone stories as short as eight, 10 minutes, as long as 20 minutes, depending on the story length. But one of our most fun stories we did recently is called The Wishing Well Collection by Liana Wall. And her story was a seven chapter book. We did one chapter each week. So we got to continue to unfold the story and that was really, really fun. That's fantastic. I think a lot of the authors that have been on my podcast, specifically the children's book authors, I'm thinking a lot of them, it would have been kind of fun to hear, you know, what the uh, voice representation might be for that story. 
well, you'll be part of the Success Insight podcast family now. So, you know, give a chance to meet some of the authors we've worked with. And what has been the reaction uh, from the the author who's come to you with a request to have their story read on your show? Authors are so great to work with because children's book authors have such an imagination and such a passion for their projects. And they bring that all to the table when we're working with them. They have the same passion towards our work and working with us. And they are always so excited when the story comes out and they just hear their words brought to life. So we love that. Fantastic. So David, in, in uh, who's doing the heavy lifting once the podcast is recorded in terms of doing the any of the editing and the uploading to your pages and all the IT stuff? I mean, I'm, maybe I'm kind of leading the question to you because you're an IT guy, uh, but who's doing that ha- part of the heavy lifting of the podcast? I think it's one of those situations where like a chef doesn't do cooking at home So Marisa is actually the one who does the editing and the website and everything like that. Marisa, actually, Reese, her (laughs) real name, sorry, actually has experience working for charities, doing their social media and editing their monthly newsletters, things like that. So Marisa has lots of experience. Sounds good. Sounds good. So really, at the end of the day, David, you're just the voice talent. Yes, I'm just voice. <laughs> and, and Reese's doing all the heavy lifting here. Okay, I got it. I got it. Well, listen, I'm curious now with the voices. I'm really, do you have any kind of at your disposal you could share some examples for us? Or is this something we just have to wait and direct people to your website for? Lots of them. So I'm from both Scotland and America. I've lived halfway in between both. So I find I'm able to at least accent myself correctly. So there's one gruff character. He's Raggedy Ann, Scottish uncle. And he sounds like this. He's sort of a big man, a hard man. (laughs) Okay. Very good. What are your plans for continuing to go forward? I mean, how many episodes? I mean, you started this during the the pandemic and the quarantining, and so it's it's a relatively new. And how many episodes do you book? Is it like try to do one a week, a couple times a month? What, what's kind of your cadence so far? Yeah, we do one every Monday, so our episodes come out every Monday, and we're planning to just keep on going and keep full steam ahead as long as we can. Fantastic. Well, you know, I'll tell you, as I get my my previous guest, I'll, I'll at least make an introduction for you and any future guests, you know, want to make an introduction for you. And then if the stars align, so to speak, then you hopefully you'll have a new guest. And I just love the idea of with the podcast that parents can, you know, sit down with their kids maybe before bedtime and kind of listen to the podcast together. And, you know, that actually kind of raises the question, what's been the feedback from the, say, the consumer side of this endeavor? You know, the the family that's sitting home and before they said, put the kids to bed or, you know, it's raining outside, can't do anything. Okay, let's, let's listen to podcasts. And what's been that reaction from the folks that you hope to be listening to these episodes? It's all been so great to hear that we can create a little bright spot in people's lives, even though life is moving differently in today's world. And it's great to know that our stories bring a little bit of happiness, especially the ones that can be a little bit more inspirational, that tell you to believe in yourself and fill you with hope, you know, tell you to dream. I think those are the ones that really touch people's heart. And they're like, wow, we recently did a book, Different is Beautiful by Penelope Lagos. And someone said, you know, I'm so glad that you're telling kids different is beautiful because I didn't learn that until later. And those types of messages are so heartwarming to hear. That's fantastic. In the, the children's book genre, so many of those books, the lessons 
I mean, even as adults, we need some of these same lessons. And it's wonderful to be able to hear that and the impact that this kind of work has. And so do you have any special plans as a result of you know, this project to produce wind chime story time or is just, you know, just kind of keep going and let the chips fall where they may? I mean, or, or do you have some other goals associated with this in mind? We're letting this kind of flow in the wind and see where it takes us. But we're obviously looking to invest more in our equipment, things like that, since we're becoming more and more involved and have surprisingly managed to stay to that Monday release schedule every week. Well, it's just so fun. We don't want to miss a day of recording because we're just laughing all the way through. <laughs> That's fantastic. You know, I, I, I'll tell you, the hardest part for me is, you know, I try to produce multiple podcasts a week but sometimes you know with our our day jobs the jobs it's sometimes it's a challenge so i applaud you i mean i think once a week is a wonderful cadence and also the fact that you're doing it together and that's wonderful too kind of like a you know husband and wife project and there's a number of guests that we have had barbara and mojica had a, a a children's book series little miss history and her husband is actually the illustrator of her books and so it's just, it's wonderful when I, when a couple are working together to, to create something so special. So really, I, I certainly applaud you two. And I know our, our audience acknowledges that as well. Is there anything else before we, you know, end the, our episode here, any insight to go or story or anything about doing this work in, in this kind of an adventure that you would like to share with our audience that will, you know, perhaps spark an insight or an aha moment in their lives? I'd say if you have a little idea or a little spark of inspiration, kindle that fire and go for it because you might have more fun and reach more new places than you expect. Yeah, and especially if the podcasting or our audio book, the fun that we've had doing it together... One of our biggest things is we have our own personal outtake and they're just hilarious to re-listen to. Sometimes our cat gets into the recording at the most inopportune times and it just makes us laugh so much. That's cute. I, I, I can appreciate the cat, but we I did a podcast God once and the cat all of a sudden just jumped on the desk of my guest and, you know, you kind of, you know, where I used to live in Chicago, we used to have fire engines going down the street, not fire ambulances down Michigan Avenue. And eventually you realize the ambulance, or in this case, your case, your example, the cat, it becomes a feature of, of the story. So that's wonderful. <laughs> if our listeners, David and Reese, would like to learn more about you and your work, where are the best places for them to go? Yeah, you can find us on our website, windchimestorytime.wixsite.com slash podcast. We are also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and wherever you find your podcast. Fantastic. Well, we'll definitely provide the backlinks to the website as well as you know your links to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I didn't know that was there. And so that's good to know. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm so glad we met via the Children's Book Author and Illustrator's Facebook page. And so kind of give a shout out to them. And most certainly when this episode gets published, we'll also share that episode with a call to action to learn more about your work in the show notes. So David and Reese, thank you so much for taking time uh, and sharing your story with uh, our listeners on the Success Insight Podcast. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, thanks a lot. Fantastic. All right, folks, we have just been chatting with David and Reese. They are the creative duo responsible for Wind Chime Storytime, a storytelling podcast for children, and just a wonderful story uh, about, you know, here's a couple that, you know, during this pandemic and the quarantining have come together and really take these, you know, their their own stories, really the ones that they grew up with and were passionate about, as well as stories from a new group of children's book authors to help reimagine that in terms of creative voices 
and storytelling using the podcast medium. So what a wonderful way to work together to create something for our listening community. And in this day and age, anything we can do to help heal and bring people together is, I don't know about you, but it's at the top of my list. So again, we thank uh, David and Reese for joining us here on the Success Insight Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about our podcast, do visit us on successinsightpodcast.com. We are also on Facebook and LinkedIn, our Success Insight Podcast pages. We're on all the major podcast platforms, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Pandora, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, and as well as on YouTube. So folks, lots of opportunities to hear some great stories and this story with David and Reese from Wind Chime Storytime included. So Folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there, have a phenomenal day, a great weekend, be safe, practice social distancing, wear your mask, and love your neighbor, and take care of yourselves, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Success Insight Podcast. Take care now. Success Insight is a production of Fox Coaching and First Story Strategies. Find us online, successinsightpodcast.com.